Good afternoon, everyone. Next Generation Weather Forecaster Joe Shock here, taking a look, at least at first glance, at the 2018 Atlantic Hurricane season. We're going to take a look at some of the guidance and some of the analogs I have pulled up from previous years, given where we are regarding the La Nina and El Nino. So it's, I think, a pretty interesting first shot at this. So let's see how we can do, and let's see, you know, what our forecast looks like at the end of this. So. Taking a look here at one of the climate forecast models here, this is the precipitation anomalies July through September, capturing pretty nicely, I think, the peak of the hurricane season. And you can see here off the coast of Africa, there's a stretch of higher than normal precipitation. Western Atlantic is lower than normal, doesn't mean there will be storms that come through here. And then you can see here off the northeast coast, another section of wetter then average conditions also note here some dry conditions here in the wet in the eastern Pacific and the western Pacific also looks somewhat active if you will you can see high precipitation anomalies there but the eastern Pacific looks like it may be on the lower end so maybe the Atlantic once again can take over this year again time will tell here are the sea surface temperatures anomalies and the big thing that really I think is going to drive this season is the lack of El Nino we do not have an El Nino forecasting if you will, by at least this model and a couple other global models, but the European ensemble is all over the place, so I didn't include that in the series, given there's too much uncertainty, which there is anyway, but I thought it would be just too confusing to put that on in this particular update. But note here that we don't see warmer than uh, warmer than average temperature, sur sea surface temperature anomalies showing up here. You have a lot of neutral, if not some cool, still hanging around, but you can see the central and western Pacific Still sound this show and mainly maintaining the warmer than normal water temperatures there. So that really is a positive for the hurricane season here in the Atlantic. And taking a look in the Atlantic, you can see neutral, if not slightly warmer than average conditions here in the main development region. And again, in close to the United States, we've got to watch this really, really closely. This is impressive too. I mean, this is one to one and a half sea above normal up here. And this is several months away. And the model to see that, that's pretty impressive. So... We'll have to watch the uh, East Coast and the Gulf of Mexico again this year. If I were to draw an impact map, what some people do, including Joe Bastardi, I would probably, or if I, you know, I'll do an, a quick glance here, there would be an impact map that I would put out. It would probably look something like this. Again, following those warmer than normal SSTs, that this would be probably 35 to 50 percent of the accumulated ACE would be in here, and then maybe. 10 to 20 in here and maybe more of that ace weighted further west where you get further west these things really begin to crank up so maybe something like that would work out down the road regarding your ace and highest impact zone so you could see that definitely the western atlantic is de uh, definitely an area to watch no doubting that i mean look at all that warm water relative to normal so something gets in there even though it may only be two or one or two storms you know to really cause a problem if a storm does the right track, which is obviously something we can't figure out this far out in time. Now, let's look at the Canadian SIPs. I thought this was the most recent run. Actually, it is. It is. All right. So, I do have the right run up here. So, again, note, above average precipitation anomalies showing up here in the central and western Atlantic. And then equal chances here, you know. So, that there's a signal there. There's no denying that. And again, look here. You can see some drier. Anomalies showing up here, but a little bit of weather anomalies up here. So that's kind of interesting to note that. But again, as I said, we don't have an El Nino coming on. We have neutral stage and looks like even neutral warm. And that's some of the analogs that I pulled up, which I'll talk about a little bit later on. What years I pulled up to make my forecast and how I went about doing that. So you can see what the SSTs look like there. And here is the... Um, Pressure, this is from the Canadian SIPs. The other model did not offer that. And this is interesting, too. You can see here off Africa to the west of Africa, you have lower than normal pressures at the surface. But once you get into the western Atlantic, higher than normal pressures, there's a storm here. It's probably going to get directed toward the U.S. coast instead of getting curved out. But that's a that's a hurricane hit pattern for the United States. And then you can see what's going on here. Uh, higher than normal pressures here, then lower than normal further away. So that's... A favorable situation for the Atlantic, in my opinion, uh, given again the previous years that I have looked at. This is the uh, CFSV2 precipitation. Again, you can see it's speculation of uh, tropical activity through the basin. The Pacific, you can see the dryness in here. And, yeah, maybe some more activity being hinted at by the model there. 
pressure pattern looks like this. Again, this is even a more conductive pattern for the Atlantic, lower than normal heights and pressure surface. So that's a favorable pattern. You don't have to worry about dragging all the Saharan air layer off the continent of Africa, the northern part of Africa, and contaminating the part of the basin, the main development region, the MDR. So that's pretty interesting to note there. And then again, the uh, sea surface temperature anomalies, you can see neutral conditions here in the Pacific and warmer than normal anomalies hanging around in the Atlantic Basin. And here is the hurricane season forecast based off what I've seen from the forecast models where we're going with the neutral conditions, neutral warm, and then some of the years that I have pulled up. So some of the years I went and analogued were 1990, 1991, 2003, 2004, 2005, and 2013. All of those years had at least six or more named storms, with 2005 being an extreme of 28, and 1991 only having eight. So again, you can see here, I have 14, these are all total named storms, 14, 8, 16, 15, 28, and 14. So I really took an average of all three of the categories and then came out with a mean, given what we've seen in the past. So for this upcoming season, as of now, and I will be doing another update as we get closer, once things, you know, begin to materialize, we'll have a better handle on what will actually happen. You know, so uh, here we are now, uh, 14, 18 storms, named storms. I think four to seven will become hurricanes. We'll have two to four majors, and they're the averages for a given year. So again, I'm predicting a, a slightly above average season overall for this part of the world. So we'll see what happens. You know, maybe the El Nino could come on faster and maybe hinder the later part of the season, but it seems like it's just too late now in the game for the El Nino, even if it came on in early April, that it's just not enough time to impact the hurricane season. I don't think, unless things went really crazy and it came on super fast and it was super strong, but right now, I don't see any of that from the forecast guidance. So right now... For the Atlantic, it looks like we're in a good setup for another active season. I don't know if we'll be act as active as last year, but it's, again, it's hard to tell. You know, we're still several months away and there's still some unknowns, but here's at least the first shot at the hurricane season forecast and we'll see what happens as we get closer. That's it for now and thank you for watching.